Hi there, booktube! My name is Cristina and welcome or welcome back to Novel Niche. Today's video, as you may see, is uh, about my most anticipated books that will be released this autumn and I know I've not even uploaded the summer one, but it's because I've not filmed it yet. So I will get to that video as soon as I will film this one, but I decided that at least for one season this video will be uploaded on time and not too late. <laughs> so I hope that you will enjoy and kind of appreciate the effort here. <laughs> but I have to say that for this year, for 2021, I don't have as many titles for autumn, which makes me kind of happy, strangely, because being fewer I can really focus on books that I enjoy more, or maybe there are even more books about which I know nothing about, but this way the video will be more short and sweet and like, shorter and sweeter, and I hope that you will still enjoy it. So without further ado, let me get into the books, and this time we have a huge amount of LGBTQ plus books here in different genres and chef's kiss, because I really appreciate the representation here, and it's never enough, honestly. So let's get with the very first one, and I'm so excited. It will be released on September the 2nd, and you will see me watching down because I have my laptop here. And I'm so excited because it's a book written by a fellow booktuber. It's written by... Uh... Oh my god. Every time I forget how to pronounce her name, I'm so horrible. It's Jean, I believe. And this is, yes, by Jean Menzies. And this is her first book as um, a full novel written by her. And it's a fantasy LGBTQ+, I believe, young adult book. No, it's actually adult even more perfect, and apparently it's a standalone, and you know we love those on this channel. The book is called The Flames of Albion, I believe, yes, and this is a fantasy with dragons, of course, if you're following her channel, and if you're not, go there, she's amazing, I will leave a link down below, and she's in love with dragons as magical creatures, and so, of course, she's written a book about those creatures. So, we are in a kingdom that's kind of living a century of peace after a huge fight, and we're following our main protagonist, who is a scholar and a kind of a bookworm, of course, and she basically discovers one day that she kind of awakened a dragon or the egg of a dragon, so she needs to pair up with this very famous, apparently, person who's called Isla, and she's the last descendant of the royal family, and she has a century-old dragon with her, and so they need to team up in order to understand what to do, and apparently it's a story of friendship, love, acceptance and that celebrates queer identity. So, I don't know, from reading the, the plot, I think that it will be very warm and heartwarming and cozy. I don't know why I have this feeling, but it just gives me those kind of vibes. So, I'm very excited, September 2nd, 2021. Then the next book that we have here is a young adult fantasy contemporary, and I'm so excited about the concept of this one. This will be released on September 7th, and it's called Major Detours by Zachary Sergi. Sergi, not sure about the pronunciation. And in this one, we'll following four friends while they're traveling around the west coast, I believe, following the indications of a tarot deck and that's already kind of fascinating. But what really got me into this is that choose. this is a choose-your-own-adventure book. I don't know how long it is and how well it will play out, but I really want to give it a try. So I think that it will work better as a physical format, but maybe even as an audiobook it can be interesting if you're able to skip like parts, but we will see how I will be able to 
in which format I will be able to get to this book, but that's definitely something that caught my interest because just your own adventure seems amazing and it's again LGBTQ+, so perfect. Next is a young adult fantasy and it's historically set. It's called The Bones of Ruin and apparently it's the first one in a duology or a series, I'm not sure, written by Sarah Rugley, I believe not sure about the pronunciation, but in this one we're following an African Tyro dancer in Victorian London, and apparently she's immortal. So the twist here, um, like, okay, the twist is that she's immortal, but the twist is also that she meets with this guy who is a part of a, a the Enlightenment Committee, that's apparently like a hidden order, and there is this kind of dual slash competition going on, so he asks her to be his champion, and when there is that kind of setting, usually it's very funny and interesting to follow, and in this case, the all the competitors are, are kind of unique, and they're called curiosities, as it was called during the Victorian era, so I believe that they are all people with different powers, so we'll see how that will develop. Plus, I very much enjoy this cover. And speaking about books with amazing covers, that, with amazing colors, that remind me of Autumn, we have Iron Widow. Iron Widow is the first book, again, in a series or a duology, I'm not sure, that's young adult and that's LGBTQ+, plus science fiction all mixed in together wonderfully, because we're following an 18 years old protagonist in a world in which um, girls are paired with pilots, men pilots, because their energy, the girls' energy, is kind of consumed by these flying machines, I believe, or these flying beasts, I'm not sure how they're like, they're called chrysalises, and so, yes, they are giant transforming robots, so the girl's energy is kind of consumed by it, so that's why the male pilots, pilots need the girls, and our main protagonist, her sister died because of a pilot, so now she's on a vengeance trip, trying to kill that pilot, but everything, like, she apparently she managed to do so, and it's told already in the like uh, in, in the plot, so I hope that it happens at the very beginning of the book. Uh, but then she's paired up with the top pilot of all, and uh, apparently the story goes from there. But like Iron Widow is an amazing title, the cover is wonderful. I believe that the author is Chinese or American Chinese, and uh, this seems just lovely and amazing. I mean, the last sentence says she will miss no opportunity to leverage their combined might and infamy to survive attempt after attempt on her life until she can figure out exactly why the pilot system works in its misogynist way and stop more girls from being sacrificed. So, the main theme wonderful. Next is a science fiction slash fantasy LGBTQ plus adult fiction, <laughs> let's call it like that, and it's called Light from Uncommon Stars, and apparently it's a standalone, so again, highly appreciate it, and in this one again gives me those cozy happy vibes for whatever reason, apparently we're following the lives of three women that will become entangled by chance and fate in a story of magic, identity, curses, hope, and a found family. And in this one we're following Shizuka Satomi, who, who's made a deal with the devil, and in order to be released from it she needs to give to the devil seven souls, and she already collected six of them, and she's finding the seventh, but at that moment, at the same moment, she meets someone who is very lovely and warm, and apparently she starts changing idea and developing some feelings, and I 
don't know, it just seems lovely and the premise is that it's good omens means the long way to a small and angry planet. So what's not to love here? Next is an adult novella of a fantasy, fantasy of a fairy tale retelling. This is a retelling of Sleeping Beauty and this is A Spindle Splinter by Alex E. Harrow and just the, the blurb is amazing. It's a vivid, subversive and feminist reimagining of Sleeping Beauty where implacable destiny is no match for courage, 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 sisterhood, stubbornness and good working knowledge of fairy tales. And uh, what got me here is that our protagonist is 21 years old, so at least she's in her 20s, which is amazing. And apparently the 21st birthday will be her last birthday, so her best friend kind of tries to give her this amazing birthday, all Sleeping Beauty themed, but when she touches the spindle, apparently she starts traveling through these different worlds and she meets one more Sleeping Beauty who is kind of desperate to escape her destiny too. And I don't know what else happens. I mean, it's a novella, so I don't think that it will be that long, but it sounds very interesting. Next is um, fantasy, romance, contemporary, LGBTQ+, paranormal, which is book. And it's the first one in a duology or a series, I'm not sure. Um, the series is The Witches of Thristle Grove, and the book is Paybacks a Witch. <laughs> and I love the spin on this title. And it says that it's like similar to The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. I hope not too much, because the show has its faults, but apparently we're following a witch who's not a very powerful one because she kind of left her town of birth where her all of her powers kind of are rooted and there is a spellcasting tournament that her family hosts or are amateurs for and so she is kind of forced or has to or by family bonds to get back to the town and uh, here all kinds of shenanigans happens. But I mean, witches, tournament, what not to love. And since we're on a theme of witches, because autumn is just witchy season, <laughs> let's talk about the orphan witch that apparently is a standalone fantasy paranormal young adult slash adult, so I'm not very sure how it will be classified at the end. And in this one we're following a girl called Persephone who has magical powers, but apparently that kind of cursed her through all of her life. She's an orphan, I believe, as her title, and she doesn't know a lot about her but the only thing that she knows is that every time that she kind of feels safe and with a new family, then she needs to leave, they kind of reject her and something horrible happens. So she's basically trying to find her place in this world. But what it says here is that after an accidental and very public display of her power, she is invited to the Wild Isle and the timing couldn't be more perfect. However, upon arrival, she discovers that while is no ordinary island, in fact, it just might hold the very thing she's been searching for her entire life, like answers, family, and home. So I hope that I will enjoy it. It has all of um, the amazing premises. Let's hope it will keep its promises. <laughs> On October the 5th, Finally, finally, we will be having the release of Laura Olympus, the printed first volume that encapsulates, I believe, from the first till the 25th episode of Laura Olympus. And Laura Olympus is a webcomic that you can read for free on Webtoon. And the reason why I'm excited for the release is that I really want to own the physical copy, the pictures and the story. I'm a huge fan. I love it so much. It's a romanticized, a very romanticized uh, Greek myth retelling of the whole of Olympus family. Like we have all of them. We have Hera and Zeus, Poseidon and Hades and Persephone and uh, all of them. And some of them are lovely, some of them are just spiteful but I just love the illustrations and the story that the author created, so I'm pre-ordering 
pre-ordering this one for sure and if you want to give it a try before buying it you may go and read it on web to just go it's amazing and the last book that i'm anticipating for this autumn is a fantasy historical fiction that's also lgbtq plus so again yes and it's a marvelous light that's apparently the first in a duology or a series that's called the last binding by freya markse and this one will be released in november on november the second and the premise of this one is that it's a mix of red white and royal blue that i've not read and jonathan strange and mr norrell that i've not read either but i know i own it and i know about it a lot so i think that the premise really sits well with me we're following a young man that due to an administrative an, an administrative mistake seems that he's named as a civil service liaison to a hidden magical society and that's all that I need to know. So it will be historically set, and I expect a bit of a slower story that focuses on manners and magic, and uh, I think that I will just enjoy it. Plus, look at this beautiful, again, autumnal cover. It's just perfect for the season. And this is it for this video. If you have more upcoming releases that you are waiting for or that you're anticipating, let me know down below. And I don't know if I will be able to buy any of these books except for the Laurel Olympus ones because I'm on a buying book ban and I will explain a little bit more later what will happen with my buying habits in the future. So I don't think that I will be able to buy any of those, but if they will be available in audio format, then for certain I will try and give them a try. So this is it for this video, I hope that you enjoyed it and I will see you very very soon in my next one. Bye! Ciao!